Good morning, or afternoon, evening, middle of the night, whenever it is. Welcome to the reading of the precious Word of God, the foundation of your life, your creator, the one who made all the decisions of who you would be, how you would be, what you would look like, nurtured and garnered you in the womb of your mother and brought you forth. That's who I'm speaking to. You are his chosen people on this September 24. September 24, we will be reading <clears throat> from Isaiah 43. Isaiah chapter 43. And this whole chapter, such national love the Lord shows in this chapter for his chosen people who are the Jews. But he's also chosen we Gentiles to be grafted in such love from him. So <clears throat> I'd like to start off with a little chorus that we will be reading here today. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God, let God arise. My God arose and his enemies were scattered. Our God arose and his enemies were scattered. Our God arose and his enemies were scattered. Our God, our God arose. <clears throat> and he can and he will at any time that's needed. He is the glorious one with the plan, right? All you wonderful brothers and sisters, <clears throat> you are all here. We will begin Isaiah 43 on this great national love chapter is what I call it. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake, I will send to Babylon and bring them all down as fugitives, the Chaldeans who rejoice in their ships. I am the Lord your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinguished. They are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honor me, the jackals, and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise, but you have not called upon me, O Jacob. And you have been weary of me, O oh, Israel. You have not brought me the sheep for your burnt offerings, nor have you honored me with your sacrifices. I have not caused you to serve grain offerings, nor wearied you with incense. You have bought me no sweet cane with money. Ah, sugar. Nor have you satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifices, but you have burdened me with your sins. You have wearied me 
with your iniquities. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case. State your case that you might be acquitted. Your first father sinned, and your mediators have transgressed against me. Therefore, I will profane the princes of the sanctuary. I will give Jacob, Yaakov, to the curse, and Israel to reproaches. <clears throat> and why will he do that? Because he wants them to come back to him. We move along to chapter 44. Yet hear now, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus says the Lord who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and you, Yeshurun, whom I have chosen, for I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. They will spring up among the grass like willows by the water courses. One will say, I am the Lord's. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob, Jacob. Another will write with his hand, the Lord's, and name himself by the name of Israel. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. And who can proclaim? Who can proclaim as I do? Then let him declare it and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come. Let them show these to them. Do not fear, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Indeed, there is no other rock. I know not one. Those who make an image, all of them are useless, and their precious things shall not profit. They are their own witnesses. They neither see nor know that they may be ashamed. Who would form a God or mold an image that profits him nothing? Surely all his companions would be ashamed. And the workmen, they are mere men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up. Yet they shall fear. They shall be ashamed together. The blacksmith with the tongs works one in the coals, fashions it with the hammers, and works it with the strength of his arms. Even so, he is hungry. And his strength fails. He drinks no water and is faint. The craftsman stretches out his rule. He marks one with the chalk. He fashions it with the plane. He marks it out with the compass and makes it like the figure of a man according to the beauty of a man that it may remain in the house. He cuts down cedars for himself and takes the cypress and the oak. He secures it for himself among the trees of the forest. 
he plants a pine and the rain nourishes it and then it shall be for a man to burn for he will take some of it and warm himself yes he kindles it and makes bread indeed he makes a god and worships it he makes it a carved image and falls down to it he burns half of it in the fire and with this half he eats meat he roasts a roast and is satisfied he even warms himself and says ah I am warm I have seen the fire and the rest of it he makes into a god his carved image he falls down before it and worships it. He prays to it and says, Deliver me, for you are my God. They do not know nor understand, for he has shut his eyes so that they cannot see, and their hearts so that they cannot understand. Nor is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned half of it in the fire. Yes, I have also baked bread on its coals. I have roasted meat and eaten it. And shall I make the rest of it an abomination? Shall I fall down before a block of wood? He feeds on ashes. He, a deceived heart has turned him aside, and he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Remember this, O Jacob and Israel, for you are my servant. I have formed you. You are my servant, O Israel. You will not be forgotten by me. I have blotted out like a thick cloud your transgressions and like a cloud your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Sing, O heavens, for the Lord has done it. Shout, you lower parts of the earth, break forth into singing. O oh, you mountains, O oh, forest, and every tree in it. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad the earth by myself, who frustrates the signs of the babblers and drives diviners mad, who turns wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolishness, who confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers, who says to Jerusalem, you shall be inhabited. To the cities of Judah, you shall be built. And I will raise up her waste places, who says to the deep, be dry. And I will dry up your rivers, who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he shall perform all my pleasure, saying to Yerushalayim, you shall be built, and to the temple, oh, we're waiting on that right now, aren't we? And to the temple, your foundation shall be laid. And we move along to chapter 45 which has been really brought to light for many people.
because we have a special person that we feel is likened to Cyrus. Thus says the Lord to his appointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him, to loose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors, so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness, of hidden riches, of secret places, that you may know that I, the Lord, who called you by name, the Lord calls him by his name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I have even called you by your name. I have named you, though you've not known me. I am, I am that I am, right? I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Rain down, you heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open. Let them bring forth salvation. And let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe to him who strikes, who strives with his maker. Woe to him who strives with his maker. Let the potsherd strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him who forms it, what are you making? Or shall your handiwork say, he has no hands? Woe to him who says to his father, what are you begetting? Or to the woman, what have you brought forth? Right? Woe to him. Woo! Wow. What a chapter, y'all. Awesome. All right, we move right along to the great, grand, glorious New Testament, and we are reading from the precious epistle, Ephesians. Ephesians, we are now in chapter 3, verse 1. Chapter 3, verse 1. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of man, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, 
that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. H-E-I-R-S, heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith, all of it through faith in him. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Wow. I mean, I consider it such a privilege to even read it. But that's the great and grand love message of a strong foundation to live by every day in him given to you written down by paul he gave it to the ephesians but it's for you also and me oh drink it all in drink it all in my precious brothers and sisters he loves you so We move right along to Psalm 68. Psalm 68. Oh, this is one of my favorites. <clears throat> one of my favorites. And I began with, with this put to music. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. And we can pray those 
words today, can't we? Let those also who hate him flee before him as smoke is driven away. So drive them away as wax melts before the fire. So let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. By his name, Yah. And rejoice before him, a father of the fatherless. A defender of widows is God in his holy habitation. God sets the solitary in families. Oh, I love that line. You know, the aunt who's a widow, the cousin who never did marry, the, the ones who pretty much walk through life alone. He sets the solitary in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, Selah, meditate on that. The earth shook. The heavens also dropped rain at the presence of God. Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Can you imagine standing there looking at a mountain shaking and moving? You, O oh God, sent a plentiful rain whereby you confirmed your inheritance. When it was weary, your congregation dwelt in it. You, O oh God, provided from your goodness for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those who proclaimed it. Kings of armies flee, they flee. And she who remains at home divides the spoil. Though you lie down among the sheepfolds, you will be like the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. When the Almighty scattered kings in it, it was white as snow in Zalman. A mountain of God is the mountain of Bashan. A mountain of many peaks is the mountain of Bashan. Why do you fume with envy, you mountains of many peaks? This is the mountain which God desires to dwell in. Yes, the Lord will dwell in it forever. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of thousands. The Lord is among them as in Sinai, in the holy place. You have ascended on high. You have led captivity captive. You have received gifts among men, even from the rebellious, that the Lord God might dwell there. Wow. Every time I read that psalm, some more jumps out at me. I hope it does for you. All right, y'all. Let's conclude this morning's little precious gathering of prayer warriors. Let's conclude with Proverbs 24, verses 1 and 2. Proverbs 24, 1 and 2. Very good advice. Do not be envious of evil men, nor desire to be with them. For their heart devises violence, and their lips talk of troublemaking. Mm, mm, mm. 
Is that a picture of today? Woo! Really, <clears throat> that's a picture of every day. Don't be envious of evil men and don't even desire to be with them. Walk away. Be nice, but walk away. And seek wise men. Men of great wisdom, solid, successful, healthy, healthy men. Okay, y'all. What a pleasure for me to be with you today. Oh, it's, it's, it's my heart to be with you today. Let's close in prayer. Wonderful Father God, we come before you humbly, Lord. This God who writes such love, who, who carries all the power, all the creativity, who made it all, and you declare you made it in Christ Jesus. You made it in your Son. And there you are, Jesus, right at your Father's right hand, the place of honor, because you came and you performed his will. You took on the hardest task anybody ever took on, going to the cross, suffering, beaten, bruised, spit upon, mocked, hated, tormented. You did all that just for you, just for you and for me. You paid the price and then you cried it is finished. You paid it and it can't be unpaid. You paid it, and if we're wise and our hearts are tender, we will receive all we know, all we can from you, Lord Jesus. And furthermore, you gave us Holy Spirit. Wonderful Holy Spirit, I feel your presence. You gave us Holy Spirit to illumine on it, to make alive this word to show us on a daily basis, a minute by minute, moment by moment. You help us. You reveal to us, Holy Spirit. You, you strengthen us. You were sent for all these wonderful ways and purposes. We are so grateful. Oh my, I'm, I am so grateful. I don't know what I'd do without you, Holy Spirit. You are wonderful. You guide. You caution me when I need it. You encourage me to go ahead when I need it. You do that for all of these brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Our desire is to be refreshed in you, Holy Spirit, that we feel your presence every single minute. Oh, create in us, create in us your guidance, your presence, your love, your protection, your promises and your purposes. Show us your purposes, Lord, please. Show us what today is supposed to be, walking in you and we will do our best. Lord, we hold up Israel. <laughs> we hold up your chosen people. You are bringing them home, bringing them home. Plane loads, train loads, car loads, however they're coming, by the sea, wh whatever, in the air. You are bringing them home. We are witnessing the most historic time ever because your word declares they'll never leave it again. They, they will never be pushed off the land you have given them. Others think they own that land. I've got, I've, you're going to show them. You have news for them. You gave that land to your chosen people, Israel. 
and they shall obtain it. And you drew the boundaries of it centuries ago. They only have just a little bit right now. But they will end up with everything that you promise because you are a promise keeper. Oh, Lord, we cry out to you, Lord. You are a promise keeper. You fulfill just what we need. You know better what we need. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We pray that you bring peace today to Jerusalem. You've been, you've been faithful. You've been faithful with the peace. We pray it again today, Lord. Let peace be in every place in Jerusalem, in Israel, particularly, Lord, at the borders where the enemy breathes threats and throws destruction across the border. Put out every fire, Lord. Let the Iron Dome catch every missile shot over. Let it not even reach the ground. Let it be dissolved by the Iron Dome. Father God, I hold up America. I hold up the whole world. I hold up Europe. I hold up Russia, China, the Middle East, North America, South America, all the Asian Far East countries, Australia, Africa, Africa, India. We hold, we just, I see the map. We just, we hold up all that you created. You formed that, those lands, those countries out of, out of the water. You rose them up. Lord, we'd ask that your perfect will just march on today like the strongest army there ever was. Your word marching on, marching on, saving people giving grace, washing those clean of all sin, that their sins would be as white as snow, their black sin, white as snow, washed in your red blood. Oh, thank you for it, Lord. Your precious blood, precious, potent today, just as potent to erase sin as the day you shed it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for sending us Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing that America has enjoyed for years and years. Lord, with all of our sins, we ask you to forgive us. I ask you to forgive us of murdering little babies that haven't even been finished creating in the womb. Oh, what sin. Heal, Lord, these special little daughters of yours. Heal them from all that they blindly went and did. Heal them, Lord, of the sin. Heal, wash them. Let them become brand new creations. Lord, we'd ask you would bless every baby born today. Bless that precious little child. We know you have a plan and a future for that child. Father God, keep working in us, please. Causing us to do your will, your way. We'd ask, Lord, that you would Hear our prayers, hear the requests, hear the cries and the pleas. Father God, please bring comfort to those who are grieving, who've lost loved ones, who are facing very difficult situations and problems. Lord, you have answers and please hear them as they cry out to you. We will give you all the praise all the glory in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ the Lord. I bless you today and I pray 
that you have just the most beautiful day of all in the Lord. Amen and amen.